Welcome to the Poe Politicking Show. Founded in 2008, Poe Politicking is a hip-hop meets self-help brand. With each interview, we teach the babies and share success secrets with you, the listener. Past guests of the Poe Politicking Show include Yo Gotti, Currency, MC Light, BG, Dead Press, Rashida, Project Pat, and more. We also showcase the future upcoming stars of hip-hop. Subscribe on iTunes and get automatic updates of each podcast episode. Popolitikin.com. Yeah, it's your boy Breeze Mantana. Right now I'm with Popolitikin. All day, every day. Go, Mons. Welcome back to PolPolitikin.com, your home for self-help meets music. Make sure you download our uh, podcast. We're on Spotify. We're on iTunes. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, we're on there. One, two, I'm in the place to be with my homie, Breeze Mantana. How you doing? What's going on? What up? What up? What up? Yeah. Can you uh, let us know where you from? Where your hometown? I'm from Mount Vernon, New York. So how was it growing up over there? Man, it was it's crazy. Mount Vernon is a... Um, it's a crazy town. Like it's parts of it is suburban, parts of it is real, real hood. It, it reminds me a lot of um, Queens. You ever been to Queens? 
Yeah, I've been out there. Yeah, that's the the um, closest thing that I could I could tell you. It reminds me of is Queens. Like it'll be um, houses on one block, then you turn a turn the corner and it's buildings and crackheads running around and all types of activity going on. So it's it's uh, it, it used to be considered a suburb back in the days, maybe probably like in the in the fifties and sixties and. Then I guess in the seventies, uh, more of us started moving in, and and they, uh, you know, the the whites started moving out, so it changed a lot. And then you know, the crack era changed everything. Hmm. So talk about your background, like how long you been involved with music? What got you into it? Yeah, I started I started writing when I was nine, but I didn't I didn't tell anybody that I rapped initially. I I was just like owning my craft, just writing. Um, my uh my stepfather or whatever at the time my that ended up becoming my my youngest sister's father he was involved with music and he was working a lot with uh doing a lot of a and r work with uptown records and working with heavy d and um pete rock and a whole bunch of other dudes at that time that was that was uh um, natives of mount vernon as well and i used to go to the studio with him used to tag along with him beg him to take me with him and stuff like that or whatever and I started falling in love with music so from there I started writing what what really did it was it was a series of events one of the things was he took me to Pete Rock's house in Spring Valley Pete Rock had a a crib in Spring Valley at the time and um I went there and I just fell in love with the house like not necessarily like so much material things, but he had the studio in in the in like a den in the in the the bottom of the in the basement of the house, and um, the whole floor was covered in crates, like the I I can't even, it was a big room just covered in crates like with with uh with uh um vinyls, and then he had like another little room that had his studio set up as his pre-production setup or whatever where he made the beats and stuff at. So just being there, learning um, who he was and what he contributed to the game or whatever. It was like a history lesson that day when when I, I went to his house because, of course, I didn't, I didn't know. I'm like eight or nine years old. I didn't know who he was at that time. But, um, yeah, I had a little history lesson that day. So that was like one of the things that inspired me to start start um rapping start writing and then um i had a, i had a young mother i had a young aunt um my aunt is only uh maybe like i think nine years older than me so she used to tag um bring me along with her whatever i used to tag along with her and she was listening to like a lot of she was a big jay-z fan she was listening to a lot of a lot of whole a lot of wu-tang um just whatever was out at that time when I was running around with her. This was like around like maybe like 94, 95 that I could remember. And she had a whole bunch of CDs in our house. I used to listen to all her CDs and stuff. Anybody's house that I, that my mother brought me to or my aunt brought me to, or if I went to their house, I used to always run through everybody's CDs and read the credits and things like that. So it's, it's just a, a series of events that led me up to, you know what I'm saying, like writing. And then, like I said, I didn't tell anybody at first. I, I just spent like maybe like three years writing, three, four years writing before I said anything to anybody. And then maybe like my younger brother was like the first person to know that I was rapping. As far as like outside, I didn't really tell anybody until uh, maybe I was like the sixth grade or something like that, seventh grade. I mean, why is music important to you? Um, music is important to me because I just I just love the way it makes people feel. Like music brings a, out a, a a whole bin, a bunch of different reactions to um, and emotions out of people. It makes people happy. It can make you sad. It can make you cry. Um, make you angry. Make you want to fight. Like it just brings out a, a whole bunch of different elements or whatever and also like when you could relate to what the person is saying is 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 real important to me as well not just like uh party music or whatever but being able to relate to the person's story 
even if you you you've never met them in a day in your life and they could there's somebody that's from a whole nother side of the world or whatever that could be going through the same the same um things that you that you going through or that you went through and what is hip hop to you um hip hop is is just is, is a uh is a culture it's uh it's, it's kind of like a religion uh if, if you 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 want to be um frank it's really like a like a religion you you live by it. you you if you when you really love hip hop you live eat breathe sleep this shit like it's 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 in you you can't really uh can't really get rid of it you can't can't get it out of you i i can't even go a day in, in, in um my life without thinking of music or um having songs in my head and i i wake up with songs in my head whether it's mine or somebody else's or whatever like it's just in me so it's that's what hip hop is to me who your top 5 top 5 rappers mm-hmm. um hov nas um Kooji, Kooji rap, um, pun, um, man, I don't know, it's a toss up. Uh, Raekwon, between Raekwon and Ghost is a toss up. Okay. Then describe your style as an artist. Um, my style is, is I, I guess, Call it like um, traditional New York, but um, able to fit the the modern times now. Like you know, what I'm saying I, I'm able to do different things, but overall, my, my style is like uh, uh, real traditional New York storyteller. Um, Concepts, things like things of that nature, things that you love, love always that everyone's always loved New York rappers for. Describe your process when you're making a song. Um, I got I have different processes. Um, different is is it, it varies. It's it's never the same. Um, I could be working on a song for six months. I could be working on a song for a year trying to get the hook right. I might not like the hook. I might write five different hooks and none of them stick. I just keep working on it, just ch- chipping at it. I might be uh, making it flow better, uh, take, taking words away, chipping words away. So it, it could a song could be written in 20 minutes sometimes and a song could take s- six months to a year. It depends. But um, usually... Um, sometimes I hear the beat and I, I know instantly what I'm going to write to the song. And it's just like, it's kind of God given sometimes. Like you, it doesn't take too much thought. Sometimes it just, it just comes to you. As soon as I get the first line, I'll run from there. Other times, um, I have a concept for a song or maybe a story that I, I, I want to portray. And it, it just takes for me to get the right, um, the right beat. So it, it varies. It's never the same. I'm not much of a uh not much of a studio writer. Um I can do it writing on the spot, but I really like to be like closed in in a secluded area to myself, take the beat home, um being in, in, in my bedroom, the door closed, just playing the beat over and over again. Um that's how I prefer to write, but I, I, I can write in a in the studio on the spot. It's just not my preference. Yeah, what's your current project you're working on right now? Um, I've been working on a, a, a album called American Greed, The Sweetest Revenge, probably for like the past four years, maybe. Um, so that's that's the project that I'm that I'm I'm currently working on that I'm about to release. I also got some other projects in mind that um I've been like dibbling and dabbling with ideas and jotting down ideas and even writing some songs too. That um 
that I want to release after or maybe before I'm not um, decided yet. Why take four take taking four years? Um, just just different things in in my life that's been going on. It, 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 some some personal stuff, some stuff with music. Um, I also like um four four years ago or whatever. I, I came home from from jail. I, I had to do uh take a little vacation or whatever. I did some time, and I was just trying to I just was trying to figure shit out again. Like just get get back in the groove of of um, making music and um, like getting integrated with, with with scenes like the New York scene again. Like a lot of things change. Even though I was only going on for eighteen months, a lot of things changed. Like that was around at the time when uh like um uh, while I was gone, it was around the time when like um Rocky was really popping um. Chief Keef was was popping at the time. Um, it was just a whole bunch of dudes getting signed like crazy, like dudes that like that was coming off the, um, coming a little bit after the blog era, like action, the action Bronsons, like all of those types of pe- people, like and the, the game just changed. Even the, the game now was totally different from how the game was then, like just as far as like um the ways to promote yourself and. Um, SoundCloud and Audio Mac, all those things wasn't really um, like they were there, but they wasn't really um, a factor or whatever before I left. So I just had to get reacclimated with everything that was going on, and then just just personal things, just trying to get back on my feet um, financially. Um, my relationship at the time. It's it's just like a like we, uh, your your personal life ends up spilling into your uh your your craft sometime. And you got too much things going on at once. I tried to go back to school, tried to go to 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 college or whatever. I was going to Berkeley College in, in White Plains, New York, for marketing and communications. I tried to do that just to you know what I'm saying get my head on straight and stay out of trouble. Um. Went there for two semesters. That didn't really work out because I was trying to do the music shit and school at the same time. And I w- at that time, I was having shows back to back. That was maybe around like 2014. I was having shows, probably like three shows a week. And I just got off parole. So I was trying to like play catch up because I-, I wasn't able to travel on parole. I wasn't able to go do shows and all of that. So I was doing shows up and down the East Coast, Baltimore, D.C., Connecticut, um, different places, just everywhere, just wherever I could possibly perform at, all over New York, just trying to get my my name back out there or whatever. So there was just a lot going on, but also just the creation process as well. Like everything didn't happen um, quickly. And I, I, I want, I really want like a, like a, a critically acclaimed piece of work and a flawless piece of work. Something that, um, a lot of dudes maybe not, um, concerned with these days. Like I, I, I want everything to sound like is well gelled together. Um, like the songs are married, like they're supposed to be together. I don't, I don't want, one song to be off or to sound like it's not supposed to be there. So that that stuff like that takes time. It's it's not always, you know what I'm saying, a um a, a quick process. There's there, if I wanted to do a, a, a put out a tape and just be rapping, I could do that. If I wanted to just put out a quick tape or E P and just rap and rap niggas under the table, I could do that all day. I could do that in two weeks. Just get some beats and just rap and um put some little hooks down or whatever. I could do that all day, but I really wanted to craft a uh, 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 um, timeless piece of piece of work. And, you know what I'm saying? Uh, if I'm, if I'm going to call it an album, it has to be that. I'm, I'm not just putting out anything and calling it an album. So what are your interests outside of music? Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a, 
I have like a, a wide range of interests. Like even though I'm from the hood, there's a, a, a lot of things a lot of things that I like that maybe other dudes that's from where I'm from is not really into. Before I was even rapping, I was really into art. Like I come from an art background. Um whether it's drawing, painting, sculpting, um whatever. So um uh, I'm, I'm a I'm a big fan of, of of art, any any kind of art, whether it's photography, whatever it is, it, even fashion. Fashion is an art. Um, so, um, the, the, that's one of my interests. What are three things you can't live without? Um, music, good food, um, my kids. So, and then what are some things you do as far as like self-help uh, personal development with yourself I, well I do everything myself I don't I don't have a manager um, I don't have any uh, financial backing I don't have any investors or anything like that I do everything myself so whatever you can see that I've, that I've done whether it's booking shows or um, doing this interview with you even though you uh, like you reached out to me, but yeah, a manager didn't set this up. Like it was between you and I. Um, any interviews that I do, uh, any shows that I do, any opportunities, whether a, a festival, whatever. I've I've um, been invited to the A three C festival for the past three years in a row. Um, that was my doing. It, no no manager helped me with, with that at all. Um. So yeah, everything is self help over here. I don't have any help. <laughs> so what uh, what advice would you give to new artists? Um, damn. Do we even have enough time? <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's it's so it's it's so much like I, I like, and I was gonna talk about that in my IG story one of these days. I just want to word it the right way, but it's just a whole bunch of whole bunch of dudes in the industry right now. That's just misleading the youth on um just how to get in this game to begin with like they'll keep telling you yo um yeah keep, stay consistent stay hungry keep working like just retarded shit like just that that's not gonna help anybody like give people the real on, on what it is that you need to get in this game like a lot of people don't don't like um Young cats or whatever trying to get in the industry, they don't really understand that how much money it takes. Oh yeah, it, it takes a lot of money. Any industry professional will tell you, like if they give you the real, it'll tell you it take at least like maybe like fifty thousand to, to to break a new artist. Not all at one time, but like pieces. Yeah. And you, you um, of course you can you can do some things with with less money, but it takes a lot of money, like a. a it, along with your hard work and your dedication, and your consistency, they're not telling you that it takes money, and they're not telling you who to spend the money with. They're not telling you that you that you uh in this this day and age, you need a digital marketer if you don't know how to do it yourself. If you don't know anything about Google AdWords, you have to study it yourself. If you don't know anything about um running Instagram ads and Facebook ads and all of that. Then you have to you have to hire somebody that that knows these things so that you could you could reach a broader audience beyond your block or beyond your town. They don't tell you that you um you you need a PR like you know what I'm saying they don't tell you that you gotta uh stay consistent with with your visuals and all that ties into each other like as far as like the way you market and things marketing is everything doesn't matter whether you're you're a hip hop artist or whether uh, it's Walmart or Coca-Cola, or whatever it is, whatever you got to look at yourself as a company. Every artist is, is like his his own company, and you have to to uh, have the the money to market yourself. Whether it's a little or a lot, you have to have some type of money to market yourself just to compete. You know what I'm saying? No, they, they don't tell you that nothing is really organic. All that organic following shit, all that shit is bullshit. 
You, you know what I'm saying? Money behind it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's not it's not organic if you put money behind it. Like that's the that's that's if if it's not organic by their means. And when they tell you like, oh, it's just organic. Or having an organic. I mean, they didn't put money into it, <laughs> but somebody yeah, put right. some money into yeah, it. Yeah, somebody put some money into it. You know what I'm saying? It, and, and that's what I'm talking about with how they're misleading the youth. Like, oh, it's my my following is organic, man. That's bullshit, man. Like, how did you reach niggas in fucking China if you from fucking um, Minnesota somewhere? Like, there was there was marketing dollars behind it. Like, somebody had a bag. Like, whether. You scammed your way to the bag. You hustled your way to the bag. Somebody invested it because a, a job ain't good enough. And, and that's um, something that you got to keep it real with the youth about, too. Like, unless you got a, a really good job, half the time having a job is not good enough or whatever to, you know what I'm saying, help pursue your dream as a musician. Number one, it gets in the way. You know what I'm saying? It, get, it gets in, like while you're at work. And you're working nine to five. Everybody got to work. Everybody got to eat. Everybody got to pay bills. Whatever the case may be. You might have kids to take care of and all of that. And all of this is understandable. Which is why if you have a job, uh, most most artists that in, that have jobs and things like that, they, they, ha- they end up coming across a manager or whatever or something. Or uh, um, a, the manager know, has a connector, an investor. Or... They come across an investor directly or the dude from they block that's getting money, invested some money into them or something. But the money comes from somewhere. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not just um, just hard work and dedication and that's it and no money. Like in the, the money you come and all that other bullshit they be telling you. Like, man, you need money to, to, to compete, period. Everybody that and, – and the way the game is right now is – that every the playing field is level. If you if you if you got a little bit of bread or whatever, or you have an, a, a a little bit of backing, you can do the same things that um a lot of these other dudes is doing. You can play the same game because the game is level right now. Like you you have a chance to be put in front of the same people that they're in front of. But you gotta somebody gotta have a bag in order for that to happen. Like I just don't. It makes me upset when I see dudes doing interviews. And the person that's interviewing them is asking them, like, how did you get here? And they just lying. They're up there lying, like blatantly lying. Like, yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I, it just happened out of nowhere. Or I just woke up one day and my uh, my SoundCloud uh, listens was at 100,000 on the yeah. song. <laughs> Like, come on, come on. Like, nah, you had somebody out, promoting man. that. Yeah, you had somebody like you to had, promote your account. Yeah, or you, 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 yeah, exactly. Like, you paid, you, you, you paid a, a SoundCloud channel yeah. or something, a, a couple, couple dollars, or you, you, somebody around you knew Google AdWords or something like that to draw traffic to your, uh, your YouTube or your SoundCloud or whatever, your Instagram, whatever it was. Like, it was marketing that got you there. Like, it wasn't you just woke up in the morning and you're fucking video is at a million views like cut the bullshit man that doesn't happen like that like stop it like and it, it really gets me angry at, um whenever i see people because like you have this people start thinking that it's easy you know what i'm saying like they 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 think that they can do it too which is good they they it inspires people but at the same time they gotta know that it's not that simple it ain't just you could fucking rap till your face turns blue you could put out videos from now until the year fucking 2030. I know so many dudes in New York specifically and other towns too, other dudes that I got relationships with from different areas. I know so many dudes that's super nice. They super nice. Niggas is nice. They songs, they make good songs. You know what I'm saying? They put out dope visuals and niggas will never get on. And you know why? Because niggas either don't have the money to put behind their shit to market it, or they they have a little bit of money, but they lack the knowledge. To do or, the right things with it. Yeah, to do the right things with the money. Or or they they, they just lack like the, like they lack the um the the connections or whatever to the right people to spend the money with. So it's it's just a whole bunch of variations of different things that those people may lack. They may they might be talented and in, uh, in that area as far as their artistry but they don't have the know-how in the other areas or they lack the money 
to to reach a wider audience or whatever so that they can build a fan base um and be able to sell merch and go on tour and things like that or whatever and these these niggas they don't be telling niggas that and another thing that that artists need to understand is yo stop begging these industry niggas on the internet to listen to your music man it's like <laughs> like Niggas like stop like stop the fucking the the commenting on niggas like yo I'm a young sixteen year old from Wichita Kansas I just want to be heard nobody's listening to that shit like nobody don't give a fuck about that bro like like I said you gotta have a bag or you gotta know somebody with the bag or what you can do is what a lot of niggas ain't gonna tell you is work on your credit you know what I'm saying get your get your credit up to to a seven something. Or whatever the way you could take out a nice little loan, or whatever from the bank. Try to get yourself a little loan or whatever for for ten to fifteen thousand or something like that, or, or maybe better depending on wh- where your credit is at. Try to get yourself a little loan if you if you like if you don't, you you don't hustle or whatever. Because I'm not like even though that's what I did or whatever. You know what I'm saying like that's where I come from, but I'm not um. I'm not going to promote to, you know what I'm saying, a kid that's living his life straight to go out and hustle or do something illegal just to fund their dreams or whatever. Like, I'm not I'm not promoting that or whatever. I'm not necessarily going to tell you that's what you got to do. But, you know what I'm saying, go get a go get a loan from the bank. You know what I'm saying? Read up, um, do a lot of reading and shit like that on business and things like that. Go open up an LLC or whatever. Get yourself a little business card. Uh, 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 a business credit card and, and your business name, you know what I'm saying? Make the shit official. Go get a business loan, get a personal loan, whatever you got to do, you know what I'm saying? And, and and bet on yourself. Stop listening to these rappers lying and shit. These, like, rappers are liars, man. Niggas is never going to tell you how to get on because they don't want you to take their spot. So they they never going to give you the real about how, how you're supposed to maneuver in this shit, like, and who you supposed to hire and all of that. Niggas gonna lead you astray and make you think that you, if you uh you put out a hundred mixtapes in a year that you grind it. That's <laughs> bullshit, man. All right, what do you like to say to your fans and supporters? Um, as far as like my fans, any anybody that's a, that's supporting me or whatever, like um, I just just thank and anybody that's that's riding with me, anybody that buys merch from me. Anybody that comes to um comes to a show, anybody that plays my music posted on the um on the gram or wherever or that if you put somebody else on, I just wanna thank them and um just keep putting people on. Like that's 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 as organic as it gets, is word of mouth. It's one person telling another person and those people telling two people, two people turning to four. You know what I'm saying? Like I just, just wanna thank them and just keep putting people on. So we could get this shit rocking how it's really supposed to be rocking. I'm gonna do what I gotta do on my end. And then if anybody they never heard of you before, why should they go check your music out? Um, it's just authentic. You know what I'm saying? That that might be the the cliche thing to say. And I don't even know if it's I can't even say it's cliche because I don't even know if people these days care about authenticity. Mm. It's, it's 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 I don't even know if that's a thing. It's so many people out here getting away with you know what I'm saying? With all type of shit and people having all type of skeletons pop out they they uh they closet or whatever and niggas don't even care as long as the music is good but if if you care about authenticity you know that my if I'm if I'm telling you telling you my story my story is 100% real I'm never going to lie to you um even though I I might do some storytelling or whatever but you'll know when it's storytelling and the story is not mine but I'm never gonna gonna lie to, to the people. I ain't I ain't um I ain't lose a hundred bricks. You know what I'm saying? I I don't, I don't know nothing about about having a a, a hundred or you know what I'm saying two hundred. I ain't, I'm not Pablo. I'm not Escobar. I'm not fucking what's the other nigga name? I'm I'm not none of them niggas. So I'm I'm not I'm not gonna feed that to you. I, I things that I did is is was. You know what I'm saying? It's it's true to me. It's a hundred percent authentic. I I'm not gonna um over exaggerate and be be telling you I was like I I owned New York and, <laughs> and all that other shit, man. We ain't even gonna we're not even doing that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, I want you I want you to be able to uh, 
anybody if you if you you was involved in whatever it's relatable cuz i ain't, it's not too over your head i ain't over exaggerating telling you a whole bunch of bullshit I mean, and I, I, like I said, I, 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 I want people to, uh, you know, what I'm saying, go through different emotions listening to my music. We, it, it ain't gonna, it ain't like it's just, uh, what's the words I'm looking for to describe it? It ain't like it's, it's just, it's, it's just one way or whatever. Like, it, like you listen to some dudes' music and you would think that they party every single day of their life. They don't go through anything. Or they hustle every single or all day, every day. You know what I'm saying? They don't have there's nothing outside of that. They don't have problems with um the women in their lives. It's just threesomes and popping bottles and um selling drugs and or scamming, whatever niggas doing or whatever. Like you just think that it's that all day. There's other elements, even if you are involved in those type of things, there's other elements in your life. You know what I'm saying that um that you could talk about that other people that could relate to that's not doing those types of things. You know what I'm saying. So you gotta you gotta you, listening to my project or something. It'll be like uh a, a, a being with me for a week. You know what I'm saying. Different things happen. Yeah, we might go clubbing one day. Next day, shit shit. I might not be in a mood. Shit might be fucked up. You know what I'm saying? I might be going through something relationship-wise or, you know what I'm saying, family-wise or, you know what I'm saying, some bad shit happens. And then the next day we back happy again or, you know what I'm saying, we going shopping or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's different elements to everybody's life. Nobody's doing the same thing or going through the same thing or feels the same way every single day. Like, all right. I want to say thanks for coming through politicking with me. I appreciate it. Yeah, you want to tell me your social media, how to get in contact with you? Yeah, everything is, is Breeze Mantana on my Twitter, Breeze Mantana. IG, Breeze Mantana. You can like me on Facebook, Breeze Mantana. Um, BreezeMantana.com. You can find everything from there. All, all the links to anything that you need to find me on is from there. Booking info, whatever, videos, all that, breezemantana.com, breezemantana, everything. Yeah. 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 Right? <laughs> Whoa. Wally West. Wally West. Star City. Now, what they going to do with me? Huh? Ain't nothing they could do with me. I got, I got the whole crew with me. So, so just keep it cool with me. Right? What they gon' do with me? Uh-huh. Yeah, my time is overdue with me. Bad joint, yeah, I need a few with me. Right? Cause they know what to do with me. Old money, new bitches. Uh, Jail posing a few pictures. All the hoes consumed with us. They don't know what to do with us. Why you talking about paper but never go and get it? Why your eagle Ferrari but riding in the Civic? Why your girl on my body and I ain't even hit it? OJ Hami the pussy ain't going to get it quit it. Uh, broke the city out. Yeah. Got my girlfriend riding with a titty down. I need a top down swerving in the Billy now. Quiet nigga but the money talk pretty loud. In the chop shop counting till my fingers hurt. Came from the bottom but we made it work. Put it in the pot and we made the work. Whip it to this rock like you slave the work. Now, what they gonna do with me? Huh? Ain't nothing they could do with me. I got, I got the whole crew with me. So, so just keep it cool with me. Right? What they gonna do with me? Yeah, my time is overdue with me. Bad joint, yeah, I need a few with me. Right? Cause they know what to do with me. Yeah. And what they gon' do with me Reason quality, I brought a crew with me Not only that, I stay with a new bitty As a matter of fact, I stay with a few with me Back up in this bitch like an excused absence I did the math, more bars than equal size of fractions Never slipping in the field, kicks out too much traction Had one too many nights, I done forgot what happened City night life's a motherfucker When you're an MC with the hammer, no, they can't touch ya I don't like the result of violence, but not prone to silence Address leader as your highness, no, I skip the sirens 
time I get back on my bullshit Make a mold of my game like I play for the bullshit My chick Selena Burke is the worst decision between her Her demeanor till I reach a million No Christina Damn now, what they gon' do with me? Huh? Ain't nothing they could do with me. I got, I got the whole crew with me. So, so just keep it cool with me, right? What they gon' do with me? Yeah, my time is overdue with me. Bad joint, yeah, I need a few with me, right? Cause they know what to do with me. Thanks for listening to Popolitikin.com, a self-help meets hip-hop brand. If you are an artist or business owner wanting to be featured on Popolitikin.com, contact us at Popolitikin at gmail.com. That's P-O-P-O-L-I-T-I-C-K-I-N at gmail.com. Or text 760-717-5803. If you're a listener that enjoys the show and wants to support, you can donate to popolitikin.com via paypal.com. Please send donations to popolitikin at gmail.com. Any amount will be helpful in continuing to create quality content and shows. As always, check out popolitikin.com for past episodes. Make sure you subscribe to Popolitikin on iTunes, YouTube, Podomatic, Stitcher Radio, and Google Play.